In this video, I'm gonna show you how to upload videos to YouTube in 2020. YouTube Simplify. Hi, and welcome to Creator Fundamentals. My name is Dan Courier, and it is my mission to simplify YouTube so you and I can grow together. And if you wanna receive future notifications on videos that can help you simplify YouTube, make sure you click that subscribe button and the bell notification icon so you don't miss a thing. All right, we're gonna jump over to the computer and get right into this. The upload process has changed here recently on YouTube, so we're gonna show you what you need to do to upload videos to YouTube in 2020 and beyond. All right, so here we are on YouTube. We're logged in, ready to go. In the upper right-hand corner, there is an icon. Looks kind of like a camera pointing to the right with a cross in it. We're gonna click there. It's gonna give you a drop-down with some options, one of which is upload video, another is go live. The third one is create post, which you may or may not see if you have or do not have the community tab. But in this case, we are going to click on upload video. That's going to bring us into the new upload process. As you can see here, instead of the video screen that we're accustomed to, uh, this is actually going to pop us into kind of a wizard with a little pop-up box. It says upload video. You'll see we still have the option to get over to the classic version of the upload process, but I highly recommend you continue to watch this video all the way to the end to learn the new process because that classic version is going to go away. So if you have been uploading videos and you haven't adopted the new process yet, definitely stick around to the end of this video because it's going to show you the process, help you get comfortable with it, show it to you once through before you actually dive into it so there's no mystery and you know exactly what to do uh, for your next video. So pretty simple in the middle. Select file seems like the right thing to do. We're going to click, click on select file. Then we're going to select our file and upload. Now you're going to see that it does its little animation there and then it pops up into the first step of the upload wizard. Pretty standard things you're going to see on this screen. Title, we want to give this video a title. It's also going to show our description uh, as well. As you can see, my description's pre-populated because I use upload defaults, which is something that you can use on YouTube to pre-fill common things that appear in all of your descriptions. If you're not familiar with that, I will throw a card at the top of the screen uh, so you can check out upload defaults, but I recommend you stick with this video till the end, uh, and then you can just do a search on the channel for upload defaults to check out that video. Now, the other thing that I want to point out on this screen in the bottom left hand corner you'll see that's our indicator for the upload process we see an actual uh, bar here that shows us the progress we also see 20 percent 21 percent uploaded and then it tells us the estimated time remaining so that's going to continue to update let us know where we are in that process as well it shows you the link that is ultimately going to be where people can find this video, the file name that you use to upload it. Now, if you click in here, you're just going to see the rest of the description. If you move out here and you scroll down, you're going to see some more uh, information that's important that you need to uh, pay attention to. So here we're looking at the thumbnail, add your custom thumbnail by clicking here and selecting your file. Once the video has been uploaded uh, and processed, you will see some still prints from the video that YouTube allows you to simply click on to use as your thumbnail. Although I highly recommend you get into the practice of using custom thumbnails. There's some videos you can find on Creator Fundamentals about how to do that. You'll also see on my version, we have this grayed out create thumbnail with the TubeBuddy icon. Uh, once the video is 100% processed, this will be an option that you can click on and actually make a custom thumbnail in line while you're uploading your video. If you're not familiar with TubeBuddy, it's the number one browser plugin for managing and growing your YouTube channel. There's a link in the description below, or you can go to try tubebuddy.today and sign up, get started for free, and be able to take advantage of features like this that allow you to streamline your workflow and do things like your custom thumbnail without leaving YouTube. Pretty powerful stuff there. Next, below that, we're looking at playlists. You can click here, any playlist that you've created. You can select the playlists that you want to use. When you're done there, you want to make sure you click done. Uh, sometimes you get in the habit of clicking those and moving out, and it may or may not keep them uh, saved. In this case, I believe that used to just abandon them, but it looks like it's auto-saving now, which that's a great thing. But if you have to make changes, you can come in here. If you want to do a playlist that doesn't exist yet, you can click here come up with your playlist and then hit create to do that as well. So 
uh, there you are good to go on the playlists. And then this is a new thing. This is in relation to children's the Children's Online Privacy Protection Act from the FTC, uh, based on YouTube's agreement with them and the concern to protect children. You must now identify whether or not the video you are uploaded has been made to target kids or not. Now there was a lot of confusion and anxiety regarding this COPPA uh, issue and the reality is this if it was your personal intention to not target kids with the content that you're making if you were not gearing it towards children mark this as it's not made for kids simple as that if you are trying to make content for kids then you mark it it's made for kids very easy very straightforward not really confusing do it based on your intention of the content that you're making now, one of the things that we see on this screen in the lower left-hand corner says more options, very unassuming, doesn't seem like there'd be anything of importance in there, but we click on that and we'll see a couple different things here. First of all, paid promotion. If you happen to be doing paid promotions, uh, this is a way for you to identify your video as containing uh, paid promotions. Uh, so you would click that there. And then tags. Tags are hiding down here in the basement uh, of the... Uh, or the uh, broom closet down here in the basement. And it says tags can be useful if content in your video is commonly misspelled. Otherwise, tags play a minimal role in helping viewers find your video. Now, YouTube has said different things about this. And my personal belief is this. The process of learning how to do keyword research is incredibly powerful in helping you understand how to title your videos and help your videos get discovered through search on YouTube. I still find firmly believe in that. As for the tags, once you've done the research for figuring out what you want to title your video, creating supporting tags for that title shouldn't take you more than five minutes anyway. So I'm going to go ahead and include tags in my videos uh, until they completely remove the tag options. That's how I do my channel. It's up to you how you choose to do that. But YouTube is coming out here and saying, hey, they don't do a whole lot to help your videos. Uh, so proceed as you will. But the option's still there. We're going to take advantage of it. Most of this other stuff is stuff that you can set on your channel and not really have to change verse it for each videos. This is all some YouTube or upload default kind of things. Standard YouTube license. That's pretty uh, standard uh, as the name suggests. You also have Creative Commons in here. I wouldn't recommend setting your videos to Creative Commons. That basically uh, gives other people the right to use your videos. And we don't really want to do that as a normal normal practice. Recording date and video location, I would never fill this in personally unless you have a very specific niche where this would be relevant. Uh, you can certainly do that, but for my purposes and for security and privacy, I would never identify when and where my videos were, were made. Uh, um, but there may be niches out there where that is uh, something relevant that you may want to do. Again, other stuff, categories, education. I do educational videos. You can set this however you want. You can set that in upload defaults as well. So it always goes to the same one for all your videos. And then comments and ratings uh, hold potentially inappropriate. Yeah, I'll let YouTube do that for me uh, and kind of set those aside. Also down here, you'll see that it is 0% processed. It has finished the upload. You'll also see this blinking SD. This is to indicate that YouTube is processing a standard definition version version of your video. Now, a, a lot of times people will upload a video and they'll be like, hey, why is the quality not like it was before I uploaded it? And that's because when you first upload a video, YouTube makes it available in a standard definition so people can watch the video from beginning to end while it continues to process a higher quality version. So that's why they show you the SD here to let you know that it's processing standard definition and also why sometimes when you initially see your video on YouTube, it is a little bit uh, less than uh, it was when you started to upload it. All right, so the next tab is monetization. Uh, you may or may not be monetized. If you're just starting out, then you're not monetized. But if you are, this is where you would go in and make any changes you want for a given video. This is also something you can set by default so all your videos pre-fill this. I leave all my ads on, monetizations on. If for some reason you wanted to turn it off, you could certainly do the, so there as well. Jump to the next one, video elements. Now we'll see down here we're at 95% processed. Uh, it says you can complete this step after the standard definition version of your video has been processed. Rather than wait on this screen for end screens and add and add 
cards to appear here. We're just going to go forward and I'll show you why. On the next uh, tab here, I always set my videos to unlisted when I first upload them. That allows me to look everything over, make any changes, make tweaks, and kind of go through the process before I'm ready to set it public. And that's certainly my recommendation because it's just kind of a safety net to make sure all your T's are crossed and I's are dotted before you hit, you know, before you go public. So I always leave this as unlisted. That's also something I set in my upload defaults. So when something gets uploaded, it pre fills to uh, unlisted as well. If you wanted to schedule it, you could schedule it in there. We're not going to do that. And then it tells you, it gives you some quick little reminders about, you know, whether kids appear in your ads and and uh, content guidelines. You can definitely check those out. I'm sure that is uh, very uh, stimulating reading. In any event, we're going to click out of here. And the, one of the things I noticed, which is kind of a... Um, I would call it a bug when you click in here and you click out, even if you don't touch anything, it changes your done button to schedule. So just click back in here, make sure that you are on unlisted. It changes it to done and then click done. So as I mentioned, I always do this as I always do the videos as unlisted. And basically once it's done processing, you're going to get it to appear here as unlisted. This allows you to come to your video list and click on the detail section and go in here and look everything over. Like I mentioned, we didn't touch cards or end screens. You can come into the editor over here. And from here, you can click on add end screens, pick one of the templates to add end screens, and that's going to put them at the end of the video. Now, it defaults, I believe it's the last 20 seconds of the video. You don't really need to leave them that long. A lot of times when people see the end screens, they tend to tune out. So you can kind of play with this and see what works good for you. By default, I have the subscribe button on there and most recent video. If you want to make changes to either one of these, you can click on the most recent video, click on choose a specific video. And if you happen to have other videos on your channel, you can definitely click on one and replace that with a static video rather than YouTube trying to decide what your latest video is or what the best video is for the viewer. Once you get those on there, you click save. You're good to go on your end screens and you can go back to your uh, video list and click on the, the pencil again to get back into that video. Here we look over everything. We make sure that our, our title is good, our description's filled out. We definitely want to come in here above anything that we pre-fill and add a description that explains you know, what's in our video and why people should care and all that good uh, metadata rich information that shows people exactly what the content of this video is. You'll see uh, now that it's pre-filled these options, it's selected one of them, you can select one of those or you can do your uh, upload thumbnail option there. As I mentioned with the create thumbnail option, you can actually come in and go through the process of creating a thumbnail uh, with the TubeBuddy thumbnail generator. And again, try TubeBuddy.today or the link in the description if you want to check out TubeBuddy for free. And then it shows us everything we've done. These are empty, but we would have populated them when we got this all set up. But if you happen to overlook that more options option and you come in here, this is another reason that I uh, set everything to unlisted so you can come back and take a look at it and make sure everything is good to go. If I had forgotten to do tags when I came back to this screen and I start doing my little checklist here, uh, which is also another thing that uh, TubeBuddy provides with your best practices to make sure you're, you know, you're, you're doing all those things, those repetitive things that really help you put out a higher quality video and a better experience for your viewers. You'd come down here and go, oh, I forgot to do my tags. Well, that's no good. And then you can go in there and get your tags populated. You're also going to have TubeBuddy down here populating your tags, which can help you as well. But once we're good to go here, uh, we can double check. We have our playlist selected, and we're actually going to undo those because we don't want this to be seen by anybody because it's just a test. Once we're ready to rock and roll, we click public here, we click done, and as soon as we click this save button, this video is going to go public, which is going to kick off notifications to our audience and let everybody know who subscribed to the channel and click the bell that a new video has been released. And this is an excellent time to remind you if you want future content that can help you simplify YouTube. I'm offering tips, tech, and tutorials to help you do just that. You can click that subscribe button and ring that bell so you don't don't miss future videos. I hope you found this video helpful. Uh, let me know in the comments below whether or not uh, you 
like the new version of the upload process or whether you prefer the old version. The new version's kind of a wizard. The old version, um, oh, the old version's the old version. Let me know what you guys think in the comments below, whether you think the wizard that they've created is an upgrade uh, and uh, how you feel about the way YouTube is moving with the interface in general. Hey, don't forget this video has been sponsored by TubeBuddy. TubeBuddy is the number one browser plugin for managing and growing your YouTube channel. It's available to download for free. There's a link in the description below, or you can go to trytubebuddy.today and get started for free. I hope you found this video helpful. Let me know in the comments below if you have any questions. Also, be sure to let me know if 2020 will be the year that you upload your first video to YouTube. Now that you're uploading videos to YouTube, you definitely don't want to stop here. I'm going to put a playlist here full of tutorials focused on YouTube features. I'll see you in the next video.